This is the drivetrain of the Freelander. At the front, the engine, gearbox and intermediate reduction drive. In the rear the final drive which is more commonly known as the rear differential. In the middle is the viscous coupling. The photograph is of the central shaft of the intermediate reduction drive and has been labeled ABC. It is a solid shaft and receives its drive from the engine via the gearbox at gear B. So for every turn of B, A and C also turn exactly one time. The drawings show the view from above and in the middle, the view from the side. The blue gear C with 21 teeth, meshes with the other blue gear F with 37 teeth. That means that for every turn of the solid shaft ABC, then F turns 0.5675 times. The calculation is 21 divided by 37. The yellow gear A with 38 teeth meshes with the other yellow gear R with 21 teeth. These gears turn the drive through 90 degrees to drive the front half of the prop shaft, which is connected to the viscous coupling. With the larger gear A turning once, it forces the small gear R around more times, in fact 1.8095 times. The calculation is 38 divided by 21. The blue gear F is connected to the front drive shaft and so the front wheel turns to the same rate as the blue gear F. Thus it can be seen from examining the intermediate reduction drive that the front half of the prop shaft is turning much faster than the wheel. This can be calculated by dividing the prop shaft speed by the wheel speed and this will reveal that from every rotation of the wheel, the front half of the prop shaft turns 3.18 times. To establish the relationship between the front and rear wheels, the rear differential must be examined. As the car moves forward, the rear wheels are dragged along and rotate. The photograph is of the rear differential. The rear wheel is directly connected to the rear drive shaft and therefore, for every turn of the wheel, the yellow gear Y with 45 teeth also turns once. The yellow gear Y is meshed with yellow gear X that has 14 teeth. It also turns the drive through 90 degrees into the viscous coupling. Again by dividing the number of teeth on gear Y by the teeth on X, that is 45 divided by 14, it can be calculated that for every turn of the wheel, the rear half of the prop shaft turns 3.21 times. When the two halves of the transmission are looked at together, it can be seen that either side of the viscous coupling the two half prop shaft are turning at different speeds while the wheels turn at the same speed. This difference is in fact 0.8%. The viscous coupling's characteristic is to try and equalize speed differences. So if the front wheels have lost grip and are spinning while the rears are much slower, the viscous coupling would have buildup of pressure which would try and transmit some force or drive to the rear wheels. Importantly, this works in both forward and reverse. This in turn means that if the rear wheels were turning faster, or to be accurate, if the rear half prop shaft entering the viscous coupling was turning faster. This would also create a buildup of pressure and the viscous coupling would be trying to equalize the speeds that is to say slow the rear wheels down. That is exactly the situation here. The rear half of the prop shaft in normal driving is in fact turning faster than the front and if the viscous coupling was to do anything. It would try to slow the rear wheels down to equalize the speed of the front. This is called underdriven. This gearing ensured that no drive goes to the rear wheels. In practice, the design of the viscous coupling is such that at these small differences it does not have any effect and does not try to slow the rear wheels down. <laughs>